Right, so, um, so yeah, as, as I say, you know, we've, we've been using it for, for, for a number of years. We, we're an Apple school. Um, but the point here is that it, it works on, on any kind of device. It doesn't have to be an iPad or a MacBook or, um, you, you know, a Dell computer or anything like that. I have a Huawei P20 Lite phone. I've got it right here in my hand at the moment. Uh, that I've been using since 2019. It's even survived a, a dressed swim. I accidentally fell in my pool one day with, with this phone. But I've got Google Classroom on my phone. I've downloaded the app on my phone. So sometimes, you know, I need to give my learners an instruction or make an announcement or whatever. And, and all I've got is my phone on me. And I'm able to, to manage my, my, my classroom day from, from my phone. Right, so with regard to organizing your digital learning environment, everything's accessible in one place. So um, you can, for example, set up a Google Drive folder for, for your various subjects, for your different groups. Okay, so in my case, I've got a Google Drive folder for grade 12 economics. I've got one for grade 10 economics. I've got one for grade 11 economics and so on. And then within that, I've got various subfolders, you know, with notes, then a folder for past papers and memos, a folder with assignments and so on. The other thing is that it creates a continuous record of work and workflows in what is called the stream, okay? In the Google Classroom stream. So it's easy to see announcements. It's easy to have a look at what material you've made available for your learners. It's easy to see what tasks have been issued and when they're going to be issued. Uh, sorry, and when those things are due. Very importantly, using Google Classroom and using it efficiently. So um, I'm going to give you a few ideas on, on that as well during the session. There should be no need for paper and printing. Now think about that. Think about how much time you spent at a, at a photocopy machine during a term or during a year. Think about how many times you printed out notes, dished it out to the learners. Learners lose those notes. You have to go and print more copies or you print too many copies, etc. Okay. So with Google Classroom, it's really going to put you in a position that, that you will be able to cut down your printing um, to, to the bare minimum. I'm going to tell you all now that that the only time that I print out anything, the only time I stand at a photocopy machine during the year is when I have to print out a control test or when I have to print out exams. All right, so that's it. The rest of the time, everything, all bits of paper, all slides, all information, it runs digitally through Google Classroom. So there should be pretty much no need for paper and printing. So what I'm going to do is I'm, is I'm just going to give you a quick kind of show and tell of my economics classrooms. Um, and then uh, we're going to actually move on to creating a, a new Google Classroom. All right. So this is Go the Google Classroom interface. Okay. And it might interest you to, to see that you know, besides the fact that, that I've got a Google Classroom for every one of, of my classrooms, so I teach all four grade seven EMS classes as well. Um, so I have the Google Classroom for, for those. Um, I'm also a um, sports manager at my school. So I've got a Google Classroom for, for the rugby team where we make announcements, put pictures of matches, put clips of, um, uh, you know, matches that have been played, etc. on there. Then our academic coordinator has actually created a Google Classroom that, that contains only material. So it's, it's kind of like a website that has got all the documents that, that we need. So exams, um, you know, can be quite a, quite a complex um, uh, event to run, let's, let's call it that. And so our academic coordinator has created this Google Classroom and, and in it, so if I, I click, so we've got the stream, we've got classwork and we've got people. So classwork is 
I would say probably the most important um, aspect of, of Google Classroom. Okay, now all of these things, so she's categorized everything that we as staff might need to know for the exams has been categorized. So it's invigilation, general rules and regulations. Whoops, let's try that again. Pre-exam calming techniques, exam procedures, forms, study guidelines, timetables, etc. Okay, so everything that that a staff member could possibly need to know about the smooth running of exams is here on this Google Classroom, which one of our staff members has made for the benefit of the staff. So all of this the teachers uh, joined this Google Classroom and you will see how to join a Google Classroom um, within the next few minutes. So for example, if I want to um, you know, go and have a look at, uh, for example, the study guidelines, I simply click on this. Now this is material. So, so all material, it means that no response is required from whoever is viewing it, all right? That's different to an assignment, which does require a response, all right? So I'll, I'll go through that with you during the course of the session as well. So here we go. If I want to recall what I've given the, you know, what I've told my grade sevens to study for their junior exam, I simply click on on the, the link, okay? Um, which is housed under the study guidelines for material. Click on that, it opens this Google Doc, and there we go. So, so everything that the learners have been told they need to study for the exam is in this study guidelines doc. All right. So going back to, to Google Classroom, so if we have a look at, at, at my classroom, so I've got a Google Classroom for all of my grade seven classes, and um, the nice thing is that if I give an instruction, for example, to let's say the 7K group, then um, I can make the same announcement to all of the other groups at the same time as well. Or let's say that, that I see only 7R and 7K on uh, Monday, and I only want those two groups to you know, um, have something done by Monday, then I can actually post an announcement just to those two groups, but do it at the same time. All right. So these are my grade 10, uh, 11 and 12 um, uh, Google Classroom. So I'm just going to show you very quickly uh, what this looks like. So I've got the 10.4 group and literally I use this every single day. <clears throat> now, when when I show you how to set up your Google Classroom, um, it will give you a kind of a default uh, theme. This is called a theme, um, but you can easily customize that. You can change that to be whatever you want it to be. So I thought it would be fun to, to say, all right, the 10.3 economics group, I'll give them a 10 rand note. 10.4 group, I'm giving them a 20 rand note. The grade 11s, I think I gave them a 100 rand. And then the grade 12s, I've made that a 200. So it's also, you know, nice and quick and easy for me if I just glance at my screen to see which classroom I have got open as well. Right, so having a very quick look um, before we move in. Um, so there are four headings at the top of the screen. You've got what's called the stream. So this literally shows everything, every single thing, new thing that has been posted in your Google Classroom is, is in the stream. And then we've got classwork. So now the, the classwork, this refers to all material. Okay, so it refers to all of these things which may have been posted, an assignment, which means that the learners have to do something. So you've given them some instructions and they have to do something and they have to submit their work, all right? The quiz assignment um, is, uh, allows you to, to create some questions uh, of different types, like multiple choice, true, false, 
um, short answer. And that's quite nice to create um, a, a little quiz assignment where you can release questions to your learners while a lesson is underway, All right? And then a question, this is kind of like a poll. Then very importantly, mostly what you should be using in your Google Classroom is material, okay? So this means every time you want to give your learners something, for example, some notes or some slides, um, or, you know, a, a PDF document, whatever it might be, that's going to be issued as material. Then reuse post is a wonderful function because pretty much what I'm doing this year with my grade 12s, I did last year with the grade 12s. Okay. So I can actually go to reuse post and you know, look for, right, what did I do in the first week of October with, with my grade 12s last, last year? Oh, one of the things I did was I gave them a test on Quizlet flashcards. So I can literally go and click on reuse post, and then it would give me a list of all of the Google Classrooms that, that have not yet been archived. And then I can go and have a look at, um, at, at a particular group for example, I can go and say, right, I want to have a look at the 2022. Um, where is it now? Anyway, so I can I can look for um, a posting from a previous year, and then I can I can simply reuse that post. So, for example, if I've given the work, the learners this worksheet last year on inflation, I can click on that, click on reuse, and it will actually. Um, give the learners um, that instruction now. Right, so those are the various things. It's very important to, to organize your work in topics because it means that whenever you do post something new, <coughs> I beg your pardon, whenever you do post something new, it's gonna be organized in terms of, of its category, okay? So, for my grade 10s, I gave them a case studies task that was in five different parts. So part one, two, three, four, five are all under this case studies task. If you are not using topics, so if you've not created, um, sorry, let's just go down here. So if you've not created these topics, okay, then your work is gonna be scattered all over the place. All right, and, and it means literally you're going to have to go to the stream and you're going to have to scroll, 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 scroll all the way until eventually you find what you are looking for. All right. So please, I do encourage you strongly to make use of topics. All right. So that you can already think about at the beginning of, of the year. What are the main topics you're ever going to need? So I've created one called case studies task. I've created one called quarter two research task. It's a research project. I've created one called tests because I like to give my learners regular online tests using an online platform um, that is fabulous. And we'll talk about that at a later stage. I've got this one called announcements, quarter one task, classwork. And then this one is the most important of all. I show my learners this right on the very first day of the new year. This is the first thing that gets posted. It's called Pi Resources, which stands for Parkland's Intranet Resources. So we've created a number of workshops, sorry, a number of, uh, what's word I'm looking for? Um, a number of websites using Google Sites and they fall under one website called the Parklands Intranet. Okay, so, so these are the topics. So everything that I post on my Google Classroom pretty much has to, has to fall under one of these topics. It's gotta be one of these, all right. So that just helps you keep your stuff very organized and easy to find things. So as you can see, I've got here the case studies task then I've got the quarter two research project, then tests, okay? I know it doesn't look like I've given them many tests, but, but I have. Um, then announcements, okay? And 
you'll notice here the icon is different. So over here, this means it was issued as material. Okay. This one over here means it was issued as an assignment. So when it gets issued as material, it means that the learners don't specifically have to respond to, to this posting. It's just giving them information. If I post as an assignment, then it actually does require some kind of um, uh, some kind of, of action by the learners. All right. So you'll see that what happens then is it will show right. You've assigned this to all those learners. Nobody's handed in. So actually, I shouldn't have issued this as an assignment. Okay. In other words, when when I went to create. I shouldn't have clicked on assignment. I should rather have clicked on material. Okay. Then it, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. So, so when you issue as an assignment, then it's going to ask you, okay, well, what's the due date? What's what, what, what is the cutoff time? How many marks are you allocating for it? And then what happens is that now it shows up in this case, as nobody's handed in. So if I did want the learners to actually react to this, in other words, if I wanted them to confirm that they've read these instructions, then they should, then I should have said here somewhere, please remember to click on submit work after reading this. In which case then it would have shown here how many people have, have done that. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so here you can see I've issued um, lots of little online tests or, or worksheets to my learners throughout the year, which is goes under the banner of classwork. And then this is, as I've said, this is the most important thing for, for my learners. Okay. So I, I created a topic called Pi Resources, and then this links to the Parkland's intranet economic site. So when the learner clicks on this, so before I click on it, I want, and I, and I will talk about this later as well, I want you to understand that I've tried to, th this is a whole year's work of posting that you see here for my learners, right? Grade 10s, up to now. That's all. That's all we see. The reason that I've got so few posts is because I don't constantly drip feed this week's notes to the learners this week, or this week's Google Slides this week. We get to the, the control test. Sir, have you got some past papers and memos for us? And then you go and post past papers and memos. If I was doing it that way, believe me, this stream over here for classwork would be 10 times longer than it is. All right. So, if there's one thing that you do sort of you know walk away from this morning session from is think about how you can organize everything that you want your learners to have notes slides powerpoints past papers examination study guidelines all that stuff that you would be drip feeding to your learners constantly or sometimes forgetting to do it then learners email you you know and they, you've got to drop everything you were doing this afternoon to post it to get away from that rather put all of your resources into one central point it can be either a google drive or it can be um in this case a google site all right so literally i never have my learners emailing me and saying sir where are the notes for topic three? Sir, can you please send us some past papers and memos? Sir, where are the slides that you were using? Sir, where's the jam board that, that you were using? It's literally all over here, okay? Now, the interesting thing is that we've got two grade 10 economics classes running, the 10.3 group and the 10.4 group, two different teachers. By doing it this way, both groups have access to exactly the same resources. So if I click on here, it says, right, all the learning material, past papers, exam information is available on the PI site. Click on the link for access. So they click over here and this is it. 
<laughs> now, whether you're in grade 10 or 11 or grade 12, that link that you see is in all of my Google Classrooms for economics, the grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. So everything, a learner that's, that takes economics and, and is gonna take it to grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12, everything is over here, all right? If they're in grade 10, they click on quarter one, and there it is. There are the notes for topic one, the Quizlet flashcards for topic one, the Jamboard for topic one. So Jamboard is a writing board, okay? So I have already prepared this ahead of time so that whatever I'm writing and is being projected on the TV, the learners have access to it already. I don't need to remember at the end of the lesson to post the notes, post the Quizlet, post the Jamboard, all right? So I want you to think about it. This is just quarter one material. This is term one's material for grade 10. Imagine if I was posting all of these on a drip feed basis through Google Classroom, okay? All of these things would have been in the stream as individual items, just the six and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 unnecessary posts in the grade 10 group. But because everything has been put on this Google site, uh, it, it means that, that the only thing the learners ever need to go to in the classroom if they're looking for material is to this posting over here. All right. Um, at this stage, are there any questions, ladies and gents? Yes, nothing in the chat so far. Nothing in the chat so far. All right. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, oh my word, I don't know how to set up a Google site. There's no way I'd be able to start with something like this. That's fine. Don't worry about it. As long as you organize all of your material in a Google Drive folder, then literally you can, you can create, you, you could call this, for example, um, learning resources and then you would create, so you would go up to create, you would go to material, you would call it um, learning resources. You would give it a topic. Yeah, so in my case, I called it prior resources. You could call that, you know, resources. You give you a description, da, 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 da. And then from your Google, um, drive, you simply go and add the link to the Google Drive. All right, so that's a way that you can organize yourself. All right, um, let me delete that one. Not deleted. All right, okay, so that's just kind of a, a quick show and tell of, of my economics um, classrooms. So that was the grade 10 group if we take a look at the, at the grade 11 you'll see it's pretty much set up in the same way uh, when i look at classwork everything falls under a certain heading homework announcements uh, quarter one task class tests classwork by resources right so interestingly this what am i on i'm on the grade 11 group so if i click on on this link it takes me to exactly the same um resource that the grade 10 took them to. The only difference is if you're in grade 10, obviously you're going to be looking at what's in the grade 10 drop down. If you're grade 11, it's the grade 11 drop down and so on. All right. So ladies and gents, um, what we're going to have a look at now is setting up a Google Classroom. Um, so the first thing here is that the assumption is that all of you have a um, all, you, all of you have got a, 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 a Gmail account, okay? So I've got this Gmail account, which I created called Pass Economics Now at gmail.com. Uh, it's really to, to help some um, university students that I, I help from time to time. So I created this Gmail account uh, called Pass Economics Now at gmail.com. And so whatever your Gmail address is, if you go to the waffle, at the top of your page, okay, and I'm presuming here as well that most of you are using Google Chrome. If you go to the waffle at the top right hand side next to your, your um, profile picture, you click on that waffle, 
and it will show you all of the various Google apps that are available to you. Okay, so if you scroll down, if you scroll down, so there's your Google Drive, that's very important, okay, because that's, that's where you store everything in the cloud. You've got 15 gigabytes of free storage. Once you've used that up, you can buy more storage. I've got 100 gigabytes of storage on my personal Gmail account, and I don't want to lie to you, I think it's, I think it's like $10 a year or something like that. All right, so I never have to walk around with a flash drive. So there's your drive. What we, of course, are interested in this morning is we are looking at Google Classroom. Now, remember, you can download this onto your phone as well. So if you just go to the Play Store or to the App Store and you look for Google Classroom, you can um, download the app. So it's going to be connected to your Gmail account. All right. So I click on Google Classroom. All right. So we want to set up our, our first Google Classroom and it will show you this okay, classroom. <coughs> And I was just obviously playing around yesterday just to, to make sure that I'm, I'm nicely prepared for this morning. And I created this thing called Craig's Experiment Class. All right. So we want to create a new Google Classroom. So I want to create a Google Classroom for all of you who are online this morning. There's 38 of you. So I want to create a Google Classroom that, that you are going to join. So what I do is I go across to the to the right hand side, top right hand side, and I click on the plus. All right, so I'm going to click on the plus, and I've got two options now. Either I join a class, for example, the one that I showed you at the beginning of the session, where our academic coordinator created an exam um, classroom. I would want to join that classroom so that I've got access to all of those materials, the announcements, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And so typically this is what your learners would be doing. They would be joining a class, all right? So when they join a class, um, either you can have sent them a link, in which case they simply click on the link and it will automatically join them to the class, or they will type in the class code into the space. And once they've done that, they will simply click um, on submit or whatever it is. <clears throat> and then voila, they've joined the, the class. All right. Now in this case, I don't want to join a class. I want to actually create a class. All right. So I am going to create the class. And now what you will see is it gives you this little notice. All right. So I'm, remember, I'm running this out of now a personal account. This is not my Parkland's College account, where the Parkland's College account is is linked to Google for Google Workspace for Education. Okay. This one, it knows it's saying, hey, this is your private account. So it says if you are using Classroom at school or with university students, your school must sign up for Google Workspace for Education account before you can use it, all right? So clicking on the Learn More, I clicked on that yesterday and I said it's free of charge. Your school just basically needs to register, okay? Um, now, in my case, you know, I'm just using this for demonstration purposes, all right? Um, so I'm going to click here. I've read and understood the above notice. I'm not using it at a school or university with students because I'm using it with you. Um, who are um, colleagues who are attending a presentation. All right, so I'm going to click on continue. So now you give your class a name. All right, so I've got to give this class a name. Uh, just a second. Really class, I read and understand. I'm not using it at a school or university. Let's do that. Okay, there we go. All right, so the class name. So I've got the greatest admiration for all of you giving up your time here to learn more to help your, your learners. So I'm going to call this class um, Holiday Heroes. And normally one would call it, you know, grade 10 economics or whatever it is, section. So what some of my colleagues do is they create a new Google class room every, every term for a group. So you could maybe, for example, you could call it 
um, term, in this case, I could call it term four. All right. Subject, um, it's in this, at this stage, general information or training. In fact, let's just call it training. And then you can add uh, what room or whatever it is if you wish to. Okay, so I go create. All right, there we go. So I've set up this classroom for Holiday Heroes, and um, and I would like to I would like to uh, let's just see what's my next thing. Yeah, so what I would like to do is I would like to, firstly, it's very important that I add a co-teacher in my case. So as I said to you, I've got, uh, there are two grade 10 economics classes. One is run by my colleague, Mrs. Wood, and one is by me. And it's important that, that we're always on the same page. I need to know where she is, how far she is with the work, what instructions she's given to her class. And she needs to, you know, by the same token, know what's going on in my class. So I am a co-teacher in her 10.3 class. She's a co-teacher in my 10.4 class. So for example, I want to go here to people. And in this case, I want to add a co-teacher. Okay, so holiday heroes. Okay, now that's a pretty bland background. It's, it's not that interesting. So it doesn't relate to what we're doing. So if I just go to customize, I can select the theme color. So, for example, with my economics classes, I like it to be green. So I can click on save and you would see, okay, so it's interesting. Does it seem to have made it green? Let's try again. So that one's a fun like blue. All right. So with the customize, you can also upload a photo. Okay, so this is very simple. Maybe you want to take a photograph of your class and then you will simply drag and drop a photo in um, or you can select a photo from, from your computer. So, you know, I could, for example, go and, you know, find something like banknotes and I would click on open and should upload it. And then it'll ask you, okay, well, which section of the bank, which section of the picture do you want? So I think that's quite nice. We'll take that part. And I click select class theme. Go save. And there we go. So it just makes, you know, the, the, the kind of the landing page of your Google Classroom a bit more, more interesting. So I think that's pretty easy to do. Um, but it just, I think, adds adds a nice touch. All right. Okay, so we've had a look at class naming, description, and theme customization. Um, I've shown you how to um, invite a co-teacher. Okay. So obviously, the important thing now is that is that this is more for the learners than the teacher. Okay. So. If I go across to, to people, then it says students and I can click on invite students. All right. The other way one can do it is one can click, let's just do this, is one can click on that cog wheel over there where it says class settings, and then it gives you your class details, general, it gives you the invite codes, invitation codes, etc. Okay, so you can do it that way by going to, to the cog wheel, all right, the class settings wheel. Alternatively, you just click on people, and in this case, it's students that I want to join, so I click on invite students. Okay, so, so I'm gonna copy this invitation link and I'm going to drop it into the chat stream and, and you will join this Google Classroom. Typically though, my learners will all be in the class on day one of the new year. So, you know, let's say it's, uh, it's 15th of January, 2023. The learners will come in, they sit down. And what I would be doing is I would be projecting the, the join code on the TV screen and they will join in that way. So, 
at this stage, the best way to get all of you to join is obviously by copying this join link and dropping it in the stream. Okay, so I'm going to drop it in over here. So I would click on here. Um, cancel, just a second. So if I want the learners to join. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to the cog wheel. Okay, cog wheel. And here it says invitation codes. So the, the code, okay, the, the class code is over there, UHQZQNY, all right? What's interesting is, is you can actually change that. You can change that. Over here where it says manage invitation codes, you can go to, <coughs> to reset. And can you see that it's changed it's changed it to oxwgdgn so if you wanted to generate something that's a bit easier for learners to remember okay not that they have to remember it they, they do this once okay they, it's, it's not every time they log into google class and they need a code all right um it's it's literally a one sort thing if i click reset you'll see oh there you go snp jbxc which is quite a nice one and so if i click on there it shows it. So this is what it would be projecting on the TV screen. That's still a bit small. So I'm going to make it take up the whole screen. Okay. So in Google Classroom, so I showed you how to get to Google Classroom. You go to the waffle at the top right hand side of your screen. You scroll down in the Google Apps, you look for Classroom. And then you click on the plus at the top right hand side and you will select join, in which case you simply type in SNPJBXE, and that will get you to join the class. Alternatively, some of you, some of you have used the, the link, okay? So some of you used the link which was put in the chat stream, okay? So while some of you are still joining, other things that you would wanna do in the stream You've got these options. Students can post and comment. So this means that there can be two-way communication between you and a learner. So you can make announcements, etc. Learners can then respond. They can they can literally in the chat stream, they can make a comment or ask you a question or whatever that everybody else will see as well. You can set it to students can only comment or you can set it to only teachers can post or comment, All right? So now in the interest of, you know, collaborative learning and, and, and um, you know, creativity and, and collaboration and all that, okay, I'd recommend that you leave the setting on students can post and comment. Obviously with due understanding that, you know, um, posts must be sensible and, you know, not um, sort of uh, create trouble, etc. Okay, you can leave this on show condensed notifications or show attachments and details. Okay, then um, it is possible to create a Google um, Meet within a particular classroom. Okay, you'll see mine, it says you don't have permission to do this. That's because I've got a, a I'm running this out of a private Gmail account at the moment. Okay, now this is very interesting. To, so with with regard to, to marking, all right? So my learners during the year for economics in the second quarter, they have to do a research project. Uh, you know, it's a typical thing. They have to find stuff. They have to type up six or seven pages of, you know, what they've learned, etc. They do not hand that in as paper, all right? Nobody gives me a sheet of paper. It gets marked totally online and I mark with a rubric that is embedded within that particular project on Google Classroom and I'm going to show you how to set that up as well. Now what you can do is you can set up your Google Classroom so that anything that you issue, any assignments, any bits of work that that the learners are going to be graded on that you will give them marks for, it will record those marks and it will add them up over here so overall mark calculation i'm going to say yes i do want to see what the total points are specifically 
I want to actually weight it by category. Okay. So I'm going to say here um, and show overall mark to students. I can set that so that yes, they can. They can see how they're doing. Okay. Add mark categories. Okay. So I'm going to say, all right, you know what? Task, tasks. And I'm going to say that the tasks are going to count for 20% of the term mark, okay? Then the test is gonna count for 70% of the term mark. And then I'm gonna give a participation mark. Yeah? So for participation in class, um, so every now and again, if I issue, you know, small little tasks to do, um, that's going to count a total of 10% of the of the term mark. Okay, and there we go. So it's already weighted them, and it'll keep a running total of whatever they have done. Okay, so at the top of the stream, there's always this option to announce something to your class, and the newest announcement or the most recent announcement you've made is always going to be floating at the top here. All right. Interesting, so let's just take a look. So, okay, right, so the stream. So for example, now this is like literally, it, it's, it, you just wanna say something to, to the class. They, they maybe don't need to, um, you know, show you that they've done anything. So I'm gonna just say here, um, remember to have your device charged. For the lesson and i can either i i can click on yeah so i can click on post okay maybe you want to you want to highlight something so i can make that bold i can underline that i can put this in italics okay i can maybe put some bullet points okay so charge be on time, uh, be positive, okay? So you can make little announcements like that and the minute you click, oh, and you can also add things. So you can add something from your Google Drive, you can add, for example, a YouTube video, you can upload something, you can add a link, all right? So I might wanna to say to them, read the article, Okay, read the article. So for example, if I just go here to uh, news, I go here to this article that I want them to read. Um, all right, so I can, yeah, it's all horrible uh, headlines. Okay, so if I want them to read this article, I'm using Google Chrome. So all I do is I go up here to this, this um, share arrow or share I go copy the link Go back into my Google Classroom. I'm gonna say, yeah, add this link. Boom, add the link. And then I can post it. Right. Just take a while to warm up. Oh, just before I post, you can, you've got some options here, okay? You can say, if you hit post, it means it, it'll send this immediately. If, you, if you're not so sure about, yeah, you know, maybe there's something else I wanna tell the learners, then you can go just save it as a draft, which means it's, it's kind of stored there. It hasn't actually been sent, but you can, you can send it whenever you, you decide you're ready. Okay, so it's saved it over there. Um, I want to, I want, so it might be that I don't want the learners to see it right now because, you know, they, they're sitting in the English class and they they all love economics. They, they prefer to be doing economics all day long. And the minute they see a notification from, from me for economics, you know, they're going to drop everything else. They won't concentrate on English, you know, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to say, you know what, I only want this message to go out later on. Okay, so what I would do is I will say, okay, well, when do I want it to go out? Uh, and you can choose your date. You can go, for example, 17th of October, and you can say, all right, I want that to go at, um, you know, 
uh, once school is finished and then you click on schedule and it means it's going to park there and the minute three o'clock 17th of october happens this thing will will actually go out to them all right but at this stage i'm just going to post it so that you can see uh what it looks like on on your side all right so that's if you just want to make you know general announcements so i'm going to do another one here quickly and just say um do your homework okay and i'm just going to go post so all that happens is is all of these things that all of these little posts that you're making will just always float at, at the top the most recent one will be floating at the at the top okay I want to show you something else that's that's very nice you can if you have downloaded a little chrome extension called moat all right please remember this one moat m-o-t-e all right so it's just a chrome extension that you can download moat it allows you to add little voice notes to all sorts of things including announcements in your google classroom okay so i'm going to go over here I haven't got time to type this up, so I'm just going to add a little moat note and I'm going to say there. Hi everyone, please remember to study for the test tomorrow. We will write that at the start of the lesson. Thanks, bye. All right. So it's actually going to add this, um, th this little note. All right. So when the learners go so on their side, so you will obviously click on your side and you can actually then play it back. Okay. So you don't have to um, do all of these in advance. Um, you can do them as you go along. All right, there you go. So those are my three major categories, whatever I'm posted. All right, now, <coughs> material. So remember that, so I'm actually gonna do this one as well. I'm just gonna say uh, add. So I'm going to call this learning material. There it is. Okay. Right. So when I go to create, okay, material means it's for distribution. It's not for a response from learners. Okay. So when I click on material, okay, um, I'm just going to say here, so I'm going to call this one. Um, so I I can add something. So I'm going to choose the topic. It is learning material. Okay. And I'm going to say here, uh, in, this is a graph on demand and supply. Okay. So you see the attached graph. Okay. And so I can either upload something from my desktop or I can find something that is in Google Drive. Okay. So I'm going to take something from my Google Drive. Okay. So I'll take this thing, this graph called Natural Monopoly. And I go add. And there it is. Okay. Learning material post. All right, so there it is. So I've added my first material. Okay, just to show you, I can now add something else. So create, if I want to add some more learning material, but from a different source, maybe it's something that's on my computer. Okay, when I go to, to classwork, okay, so stream, I go to classwork, I go create. And I want to create something, some material. Where must it go? Well, I want it to go to under past papers. So I'm just going to make stuff up now, right? So I'm going to call it um, past June paper, all right? And I can give a description, okay? So this is the 2022 paper, okay? Now, could be in Drive, it could be um, something on my desktop, etc. Okay, so let's just pretend here that it is um, uh, something I want to upload off my desktop. 
but really we need to start thinking about using drive okay right so i'm going to click on drive so the google drive account that is connected to this gmail account okay it will have all of the whatever i've got in there okay and i'll find it i should have just obviously um uh, you know filed as well okay so for example maybe it's uh, this thing over here that's the past paper that i'm looking for i simply click on it and i go add and there it is i click on post all right okay right so um i hope that's answered the question all right so ladies and gents here something that i really wanted to show you this morning that that we can try and get done is um i want to show you how to to, to what the workflows look like um when when you issue something to the learners to be done okay so I'm going to demonstrate creating a, some piece of classwork for, for the learners. All right. So what I can do here is go to classwork. Okay. Uh, no, not that. So I'm going to create. Okay. Go to create. I'm going to create a little assignment for people to do. All right. So I'm just going to call this assignment one. Okay. Now remember, if I've got moat, I can put a voice note here. Okay. But I'm going to say here, make sure that this is, is done during today's lesson. Okay. Now, I can actually go directly here to create. Okay. I'm going to create a Google Doc. So you can create a doc, slides, sheets, drawings, or a form. Okay. So I'm going to create this one over here, a doc. And now it's actually opening this Google Doc uh, that it will store in a folder connected to this Google Classroom, which I call Holiday Heroes. Okay. So I'm going to take a little shortcut here. I'm going to say here assignment one. Okay. And I'm going to create some questions. Now I can type out the questions. Okay. Like question one explain uh, uh, no more than 50 words okay economics okay now I haven't got time for all that typing so watch what I'm going to do here I'm going to go up here to tools and I'm going to go to voice typing. Okay. Watch the video and explain why you agree or disagree with the statement made about rational behavior. Okay. Right. So you can see that's a huge time saver. You can, you can tell this to translate it into something else as well. So I want this to actually, let's make one for our Afrikaans learners too. And we'll just do that. Isn't that nice? Organize it so that it's going to give this document to the learners. You decide. Can they only view the file as in like you're giving them a sheet of paper behind a piece of glass and they can read it, but they can't write on it or anything. If you say students can edit the file, it means literally everybody can work in that same document. So this is great for some kind of class collaborative work. You know, you give them a question and you say, right, all of you sit and discuss it and write your ideas down on this um, document. Now what I often do is I make a copy for each student. So what, what this means is that every single one of you is going to get your own personal copy of this document. And I want them to work in Topic, what is it? Well, it's classwork. When do I want this to be due? Um, 
So I'm gonna, it's gonna automatically say, okay, what about tomorrow? So I'll say yes tomorrow and we'll give them until three o'clock. Okay. And then category, look at this, tasks, test, participation. So I'm gonna say participation. And in this case, I'm going to say that I want this to be five marks. Okay. Now watch this. This is a really, really neat thing. If you've not been using rubrics in classroom before, start using it. Okay. So I'm going to create a rubric that is going to help me to mark this work. Okay. So <clears throat> let me go on to create this rubric. It's really quick and easy. So I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. So I'm just going to go to rubric and I'm going to say create the rubric and decide on the criteria. So I'm going to call it spelling and grammar, criteria and description. So work with regard to and grammar. Okay. And then you can decide whether you want it to be in descending or sending scoring scale. All right. So uh, I'm going to change it to ascending. Um, so if if it's a poor work, okay. Um, so more than five errors, then they get zero marks. Okay. Add the next thing. Okay. They'll get one mark if it's satisfactory. And uh, that's maybe three to five errors. And then they'll get two marks if it's good. And I'm going to say uh, fewer than three errors. Okay. Now, a real time saver is this. Okay. Instead of resetting up the whole thing again, I'm simply going to go over here and I'm going to say duplicate the criteria. Okay. Now to look quicker, now I can say, okay, uh, this one now, enthusiasm. And what's this? Uh, Interest shown. And again, so poor. In this case, um, seems disinterested. And in this case, satisfactory. So I'm going to say there uh, loves the subject. And, and over here, um, great participation. All right, so you decide on those things. Now, it's not to say that your that your rubric has to be symmetric three by three or four by four or five by five or whatever. Okay. I'm gonna again just duplicate this to make life easy for myself. Okay. So, so I'm gonna duplicate the criterion. Okay. Now this one, this last one is gonna be diligence. Okay. Diligence. Work completed on time. Okay. And so poor will be it's done late. And good done on time. Now, this one I don't need. Okay, this one I don't need. So I simply go to the three dots over here and I go delete this level. All right. Now you can see it's out of five. All right. So there's my rubric. I've created my rubric. Beautiful. I go save. I'm almost ready to give this assignment to my learners. Um, let me just refresh this so that that where it says untitled document, it's going to say assignment one now. So the last thing, so of course I'm going to edit this because I'm not finished. I would like 
to add something. So I'm going to add a YouTube clip. So I'm going to add a YouTube clip here. Um, 60 second economics. All right, so I like this clip over here. I'm going to select that one so I can watch it first, but I know what it's all about. I'm just going to add the video. There we go. So I can add whatever I like to this thing. Ladies and gents, I'm just about ready to give this to you. Okay. What I want just before I forget, and if we run out of time, so it's not showing on my, my personal Google Classroom, but on my classrooms for that, that are linked to my school account, if I give the learners an assignment that I want them to do, okay? Um, let me just go to the grid 10, 1, 3. Okay, so if I go to an assignment, and, and these days we're very worried about plagiarism and all that, aren't we? Okay, so if I go here, okay, I can actually select, I can actually select as well that it checks for plagiarism. Okay, where is it? Instructions. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly do a new one. Uh, let me go here to this one, 12.3. Let me go here to this one, second quarter task. So, so here's the beauty of looking at your topics, okay? So if I just go here to research project, okay? I've given them a long story here about plagiarism and, you know, threatened them with hell and damnation, okay? And it gives the option for this to check plagiarism. I can't understand why it's not showing up here now, but if I were to do this, for example, if I go create assignment, uh, if you if you take a look there under rubric, it says here check plagiarism originality. So if you if you tick that, it means that when the learners do their work in this Google Doc, okay, it's going to check for plagiarism. All right. So I'm ready to give you guys all this work that you've got to do. Okay, it's going to be done by tomorrow, da, 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 da. And literally, um, so I can schedule it so it goes at a later stage, but I'm going to actually assign it right now. Okay, so I'm going to assign it. And you guys will immediately see it in your classroom stream. And it should also give you a notification by email that says Craig Fortane has just issued, or in this case, uh, passeconomics at gmail.com has just issued a, a new assignment to be done. So on your side, um, you, I would like for you to submit your work. I want you to hand in your work, okay? Because then I'm going to show you quickly what it looks like when we're marking on the rubric. All right. So... I just want a few people to click on, on hand in. Okay, great. So guys, this is really just for demo purposes. So some people have now handed in, that's great. So it shows me who's handed in, who still needs to do their work. So just so that you can see what it looks like when you're marking with the rubric now, okay? So these two people who have handed in, I can see their work, okay? So it's, um, Ensign Philipsa and uh, Favila. So I'm now going to click on, on their work and I'm going to mark it. Now watch how quickly this goes. Okay. Using the, the rubrics. All right. So I'm familiar with what's in these blockies. Okay. I know that, um, I, I know that, uh, you know, that one over there is poor. I know that's satisfactory. I know that's good. If I can't remember, I simply click on the drop down and I can say, okay, poor means more than five errors. Satisfactory, three to five. Good is da 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 da, da. Okay. So once you get to know your, your rubric well, you're not going to have to keep looking under what these blocks are. Literally, all you do is you go, okay, spelling and grammar was great. 
enthusiasm, mm, satisfactory, diligence, hand it in on time. Yes, there we go. Now, watch this. I can make some comments, okay? And you can add to a comment back. So I'm going to say here, type setting. Um, use full stops. Okay. And now, the other interesting thing is that you can add these comments to a comment back. Okay. So that you can reuse them. All right. So you can reuse them. I'll give you another example. So watch this one over here. Watch. I want to go comment. The minute I type anything that is similar to what's in there, it's going to say, oh, do you want that comment? Great time saver. All right. Now I can add a private comment. I can say they're well done. Okay. And thanks. Uh, just there's so much fabulous stuff to know that I don't want um, <laughs> I don't want people to miss out. Okay, so I've looked at this person's work, spelling and grammar. Mm, okay, uh, satisfactory, enthusiasm is great. Diligence, no, that didn't hand in on time. Now, I can actually add a moat. Hi, Yasmina. Um, great work, but you need to use the spelling and grammar function next time. Thanks, bye. And so now this learner is actually going to get this voice note, okay? On her side, she can listen to it, all right? It says awaiting response. So she can also respond to that, okay? So she can also give a moat um, response, okay? So when I click over here, it shows me what I have marked, okay? So there you go. Can you see it's added up the marks automatically for these people, all right? So if I go click over here return I can either return this submission or multiple submissions so I prefer once I've marked everybody's work then I send it all to everybody at the same time so that learners don't feel oh you know so we've marked his work before mine blah 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 all right so I'm going to go return multiple submissions it says right what do you want to hand in at least what do you want to hand back so I'm going to go that one that one that one and oh, no, I don't want to they've handed in but I haven't marked them yet okay and then I simply go return. Boom. There they go. They will get their, their work marked plus whatever comments I made. Right. So that's that's a great time saver using the rubric. All right. You always look at the waffle. Okay. The waffle. And here's your Google Drive. Okay. So in your Google Drive, organize it nicely. Okay. So organize make yourself some folders etc okay and stuff here is, is scattered because i don't normally use it for this okay so i'm gonna go to my drive okay so these these are the various folders that i've got set up over here okay various folders now if i type so i can create a folder by clicking on by clicking on new and I can, you can upload an entire folder that's already got stuff in it if you want to, okay? But I'm going to go here, new folder, and I'm going to call it um, WCP grade 10 economics, okay? Create. Now, you want to add things to that, all right? So I'm going to show you quickly what I do. So a lot of you are going to have tons of word documents and things like that that you now want to put into your drive so that you can now add that material to your google classroom so wherever you've got the stuff housed go and have a look for it okay in my case i'm going to go here um, okay So do you see here, I've got, I've got Word documents. So the only time I use Word documents is, is when, you know, I, I do a final print of a test or an exam. And, and from next year, I'm not doing that anymore. It's going to be a Google Doc only, all right? So here, I've got WCED Grade 10 Economics. Now, remember, it's important here as well that you create subfolders for this. For example, you call it uh, Notes. You call it... Uh, 
exams. So create a new one. You can call call that exams, etc. Okay. Right, there we go. Okay, so you can create as many folders as you feel you need. And those in essence are going to be the back, the back room to your Google Classroom. Okay, right. So what have I got here? I've got some past papers. All right. So I'm going to show you very quickly how I'm going to take a Word doc. Okay, I'm going to take a Word doc and I'm simply going to drag and drop it into exams. Oh, ladies and gents, very important thing that I've, I've, I've wanted to point out to you is when you create little tasks and stuff for your learners to do, insist that they must do it on a Google Doc because then it's possible for you to make comments on their doc. Okay. If they issue it as Word docs, PDFs, etc., then you, you lose that power. All right. So there we go. I've added this Word document to my Google Drive. All right, so when I open it, it's going to open it as a, as a Word document, okay. So you'll see it's got the extension dot, um, .docx at the end of it, okay. So dot .docx, there it is, all right. But I would like this to be a Google Doc, all right. Because with a Google Doc, when I share that, it means whoever's looking at it is looking at the latest, newest, freshest version of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go, you know, file, save as Google Docs. And here it is. It's now turned this into a Google Doc. All right. And it's just as editable as a um, Word doc would ever be. All right. So I'm going to show you now. I, I can go, you know what? I want to add this to, um, I want to create some material. So I'm going to go restricted, only open access. Okay. So if we go copy the link. Okay. Okay. Hang on. So anyone with the link, so I'm going to go copy done and so there it is it's in this google drive i want to add it to this google classroom holiday heroes i go to classwork i go to create it's material so past june exam paper and it's a Google Doc, so that means I'm adding it as a link. Boom. There it is. Use this for revision. And I simply go post a topic. Very important. Where do I want it? It's, in this case, past papers. And I go post. And so the learners will immediately know that I've posted that. There you go. Okay. That, I called that past June paper. Okay. That was, so I can always edit this. I can say, you know what? Uh, um, Save it. So it changes it. And so there you go, past June paper, as you can see, this item over here started out as a Word document a few minutes ago. It's now been converted into a Google Doc. 